Hello and welcome to today's Verified Live. There's been international condemnation after the death of seven aid workers in Gaza. The charity World Central Kitchen says their convoy was bombed in an Israeli airstrike just after they'd unloaded food from a warehouse. They are now suspending their operations in Gaza. The Israeli military says it's conducting a review into the incident. The seven workers are from Australia, Britain, Poland, a US-Canadian dual citizen as well as a Palestinian. World leaders and foreign ministers are pressing Israel to clarify the circumstances surrounding their deaths. Our correspondent in Jerusalem, Yolande Nell, begins our coverage this hour. There were no survivors. Cars in the aid convoy were hit directly. Even with the world's central kitchen logos clearly displayed and, the US charity says, prior coordination with the Israeli military. Displaced Gazans staying in tents nearby heard the blast and ran to try and help. This is our situation. Anyone who distributes aid or brings it to Gaza is exposed to shelling and death, whether it's an international organization or not. Distressed colleagues of the seven aid workers killed have been absorbing the shocking news. Since the war began, their NGO has provided more than 40 million meals in Gaza. Australian Lalzami Frankom, who appeared in a recent World Central Kitchen video, has been confirmed as one of the dead. There are reportedly British citizens too. The Prime Minister Rishi Sunak says he's shocked and saddened. They're doing fantastic work bringing uh, alleviation to the suffering that many are experiencing in Gaza. They should be praised uh, and commended for what they're doing. They need to be allowed to do that work unhindered and it's incumbent on Israel to make sure that they can do that and we're asking Israel to investigate what happened urgently because clearly there are questions that need to be answered. World Central Kitchen has been sending food to Gaza from Cyprus along a new sea route. The aid workers had just unloaded 100 tonnes from the latest shipment when they came under attack. Israel's military says it's investigating. We are committed to examining our operations thoroughly and transparently. I just spoke to WCK founder, Chef Jose Anders, and expressed the deepest condolences of Israel Defense Forces to the families and the entire World Central Kitchen family. In Gaza, where bodies of the aid workers, locals and foreigners are being sent home for burial, World Central Kitchen says it's heartbroken and grieving. And these deaths will be felt more widely too. The charities now paused its operations in the war-torn territory where famine's looming. It says it will soon make decisions about the future of its work. Yolande Nell, BBC News, Jerusalem. Straight to breaking news, an update on that main story. World Central Kitchen have confirmed in the last few minutes to the BBC that three of their staff killed in that Israeli airstrike in Gaza were British. We'd said in our introduction that a variety of uh, foreign nationals, we knew there were uh, British workers, but we did not know the numbers. And that coming in the last few minutes, that it is three of the seven are British. So that has just come from World Central Kitchen, confirming to the BBC that three of the seven staff killed were British. So uh, we will have more on that element of that story in a moment or two. But in terms of the questions being raised, well, uh, we've heard world leaders, we've heard uh, a variety of foreign ministers asking serious questions of Israel. Well, Israel's Prime Minister has released this video message just a short time ago. Let's hear. Unfortunately, in the last day, there was a tragic incident of an unintended strike of our forces on innocent people in the Gaza Strip. This happens in war. We are checking this thoroughly. We are in touch with the governments and we will do everything for this not to happen again. Well, that was Benjamin Netanyahu. Let's talk to UNICEF's spokesperson, James Elder. James, welcome here to the programme. A really tough day, this. Your reaction to this news of the deaths of seven aid workers? Well, it's just such a senseless loss, Matthew. It's a, a, a reaction, a, an immense tragedy for their families who would have no doubt been worried for them every single day uh, that they're away hearing news and happy to get the odd message back and no doubt happy to hear the work that they were doing, the incredible work that they were doing 
the, the those people, the frontline, some of the frontline actions for 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 people who were coming, particularly down from the north of Gaza Strip, who were cut off, Matthew, and had not seen food or or, or or sometimes anything like psychological help. And that's what these colleagues at World Kitchen were doing. It was immense work, and they would have been sharing that with families. It's a senseless loss. Just in the same way, it underscores there are senseless losses that families are enduring on the Gaza Strip every single day. We heard there that, you know, innocent lives, beautiful, innocent lives. There are beautiful, innocent lives. Tens of thousands of them have been killed since this war started. James, we spoke to you only last week on the programme. You were there in Gaza. You're now out. But I gather you met with this team only in the last couple of days. Something like this for all aid workers must be shocking, must be winding. They're such an impressive team, Matthew. They were where I met them um, at one of their spaces at World Central Kitchen, which is just near the final checkpoint on the coast there. Um, they have psychological support for people because people who are coming out of the north have suffered all types of humiliation and relentless bombardment. A lot of people in, in residential housing around Shifa Hospital who for two weeks had seen unspeakable things and they come out and they get food and, and yeah, so there was something about these colleagues, Palestinian, I hadn't met my Australian counterpart um, and they just, they, they knew the dangers, they wanted to be there but I'm sorry, when I say they knew the dangers, they knew this is a difficult place to work. It's a place where you've got bad sanitation. I just left a friend who's got severe hepatitis um, because of what she's caught. But you don't expect this. When you get approvals to move and you're in an armoured vehicle, you have to trust the occupying power. You have to trust Israel, therefore, that you are allowed to move. You're only moving in that convoy, as we've all done many times. And an armoured vehicle is good if there's a stray bullet or something, a missile through the roof with your exact coordinates. I mean, and here we, and here we are. Here we are. James, just for those people watching around the world who don't know how aid agencies operate on the ground, the, the cars, we're seeing images of those vehicles on our screens at the moment. They were very clearly marked. The aid agencies do let Israelis know what they're planning, their routes used, the car used. Is that absolutely common practice? Very much so. It's essential. You can't move particularly where they are, Derry Bala in the middle area in the north, you cannot move without that approval. You seek an approval, it might take a day, it might take three days, but you seek an approval two days before, minimum. You get that approval, the exact coordinates, you will move, you will move to a designated spot. You might then wait, it's called a waiting area. You might then wait again for another call to go to get an all clear, then you will move again. It is laborious, it is painstaking. It's an active military zone, but then once you start to move, as these young people were, you know, again, in the in the essential delivery of, uh, of food to people facing famine, then you do so in the hope that despite all the horrors you've seen that day at hospitals and so on and, and, and injuries to children, you do so with the fair knowledge that you will not get a missile attack. And yet here we are. I mean, there, as I yes. say, there are thousands of families who assume they'd be safe in their homes. A, a final thought then, because... Uh, World Central Kitchen have now suspended their operations. They had been at the forefront of that operation of bringing in aid via the sea, that new route. So here is the question. Is this a coincidence? Is it the fog of war or is it something more sinister? Honestly, Matthew, I don't know. I can't speak to, to the intent here, of course. We've heard many, many apologies around this. The, the facts still remain that we've certainly seen um, malintent in restrictions of aid. That's why we have imminent famine. That's why we've seen a catastrophic decline. That's why we see 13,000 children reportedly killed. These numbers don't, don't occur when they're all, due, all due care is given to uh, children, civilians, or in this case, those people who travelled across the world to try and help others. James Elder, thanks once again. Thanks for joining us here live on...